How do you structure a game engine? When deciding on how to handle objects in your game, you have a few options. Let's take a look at two of them. In this code, we have an entity. It's extremely simple to see what parts the entity is made out of. It's extremely simple to work with this particular entity. Okay, now where's the problem with this? Why am I not doing everything like this? Well, the problem is, what if you want more data in this entity? Do you really need the data for all instances of the entity? If yes, then great. If not, then you probably immediately thought, let's make another class that inherits this entity. Great. Now we have an entity and a class that expands the data in the way we need. Now, if we expand the underlying entity, all classes that inherit the entity expand as well. No one here is saying that that's the wrong way to do this. This is perfectly fine if that's all you need. But let's dig a bit deeper. The first solution has one big problem and that's modularity. Let's say that we want to have an entity warrior and an entity healer. Warrior can attack and healer can heal. But now we want to add an entity paladin that can heal and attack. With more and more complexity, you'd have to create different subsets of entities for each possible scenario. That's perfectly fine if you 100% know what entities you'll need, but what if we don't know that? Or what if we know that the entities can change during development? We don't want to maintain that large hierarchy of interconnected entity relationships, so what can be done with it? I'm sure you've heard about it already. You've been probably waiting all this time for it. It's our favorite entity component system. In entity component system, the entities don't hold their own data. They have just some sort of index telling us what the entity is so we can work with it. All the data is in components. These can be attached to an entity without having to bother with inheritance. Each entity can have a component or not, so there's no unnecessary data being held by the entity. The last and the most important part of entity component system are the systems that interact with the entities through their components. Let's take a look at an example so we can see what we're talking about. We have an entity, we'll call it player, but for our engine it's entity 0. This entity has a transfer component. It tells us the position, rotation and size of the entity. The last piece of the puzzle is a movement system which takes in a transform component and moves it a bit. I have a big problem with these explanations and that's ambiguity. Let me explain. I may be a dum-dum, but how are entities and components supposed to be connected if you want to achieve zero waste hierarchy? Maybe I'm being too new before this, but just saying that it's connected doesn't translate into code very well. If you're like me, then I have good news for you. I have written my own entity component system that works and kinda makes sense to me. Let's take a look at my own entity component system in which I'm trying a bunch of stuff. For example, this is how a component looks. Weird that it's a bunch of lists, right? Well, from what I understand, CPU likes it more when the data in memory is in lists of simple primitives. It should lead to better performance, but I haven't done the testing yet. It just looks fun to me. Let's take the same example, but I'll actually show you how it would work in my engine. Right now, as is structured, you might like it, you might hate it. It might be completely wrong, but hey, it works right now. Okay, we have an entity with an ID and a component mask. It's just a list of enums that set the components that the entity has so we can check it faster than searching through the components themselves. Let's add a transform component, which is just a container for a bunch of lists, holding the transform data for all entities that have it. Now, how do we say what entity has what component? The simplest, dumbest, easiest way with a mock entity ID to index in the list. I know that there won't be that many components, so for now I just have a container for maps, mapping the entities to their component indexes in the component containers. If we want to add a component to the entity, we just need to add a new value into the components list, add the correct value into the entity's component mask, and add a pair entity ID to the last index in the list into the mapping. Now that we can find out what entity has what component using our mapping, we can add our movement system. The movement system holds all the indexes in the transform component in a separate list of indexes so we can simply and easily define what components should move. It has a few functions like add and remove entity which just put the component indexes into the list of working components so that we can simply look through it, access the components and modify them if necessary. For our case, we'll run a for loop looping through the components we want and modifying them. Now, is this the best implementation? Of course not, but it's one that my brain came up with and it's 
suits my needs for now, so I'm incredibly happy with it. It's just for inspiration, you don't have to use it, but maybe now Entity Component System makes a bit more sense to you and to me as well. If you don't want to write your own ECS in C++, I've heard great things about the library ENTT, link will be in the description below. I haven't tried it, I just skimmed through it and it's really complex, but it should have great performance. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you want.